Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I'm going to be showing you a really exciting video. It's the differences between Vegas Pro 16 and 17. Now, as I go through all these, I'm going to briefly explain them, but if you want more in-depth tutorials on these specific new features and whatnot, I will be having a ton on my channel. You can check that out, Scrapyard Films. I do a lot of tutorials for this stuff already. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. All right, so the first batch of things I'm going to be talking about is the new plugins that Vegas 17 has. So if we go up to our plugins, the first one I'm talking about is Auto Looks. Now this one was already in Vegas 16, but it only had about eight or ten or so, and they've added a ton now, right here. And what basically Auto Looks are are Instagram filters or LUTs, lookup tables. They just change the look of your video by you know colors and dynamic contrast and whatnot, just like that. The next thing they did is improved their video stabilization. They rebuilt it from the ground up. We type in stab and we get video stabilization. We go here and normally if you were to drag this onto your clip, this would be grayed out and it would tell you that you had to add it from the media effects. Well, right now you can add this now at the event level. The next thing they added, which is my personal favorite at this point, is color grading, actual legit color grading tools and a whole menu for that. So if we do our search, type in color, then we find color grading, the new tab, drag and drop that on here. Now it's gonna tell you, you can't just color grade from this event. We're gonna have to actually go to a menu. So we go to tools and video menu, tools, video, color grading. It'll completely convert our bottom timeline to a color grading timeline. And not only that, they added a vector scope as well. So let's exit this, and the next effect I'm going to be showing you guys is Mesh Warp. If we go to our searches, type Mesh, then we see the effect Mesh Warp. Click that, drag it onto our footage, and you're going to see some lines and dots. Now what you can do with these lines and dots is drag them and put them in crazy places. You can animate it, you can add more dots by increasing your grid size. Let's reset the mesh. You can lock them to where you can make it equal for everything. You can unlock it and add just some Y's, some X's. You can animate it all. It's just a, you can make you look angry if you wanted. Uh, you could do a lot of stuff with this mesh warp tool and it's really fun to play with. The next thing they added is a slow motion plugin. So we type in slow. We have slow motion right here and we drag and drop it onto our footage. We can analyze the footage and what it does is create super smooth slow motion using optical flow or morphing. And so instead of it being a framey blurry jump, it can detect where the gap in the footage is and generate an image inside of that so it looks more smooth. They call it hyper smooth. Another awesome feature that they've added to Vegas is they've improved the picture in picture plugin. They've added the ability to do a freeform and to adjust the specific corners instead of it being a fixed object. So down here I have some footage of just a TV and above it I have just footage of one of my videos. If I drag the default picture in picture plugin to it, then you'll see down here we have key proportions which has been added. If we select that and do freeform, that allows us to grab the points in the corners of this video. So we just drag them up and put them in place of whichever TV you're wanting to imitate. And there you go. Now your video can fit on any TV at any angle. And the next plugin I want to tell you about is Lens Correction. What Lens Correction does is it fixes any kind of distortion in your video due to wide angle lenses. Usually bulging that comes with GoPros and things like that. I'm going to show you some differences of what it looks like with Lens Correction on and off. And last plugin but not least is the white balance. If you go down to white balance, this was here before, but if you drag it onto here, then they added a color temperature slider. This wasn't there before, but they have added that in there for your convenience. Moving on to transitions. They've only added one transition in Vegas Pro 17 from 16, and that is warp flow. So the warp will go frame by frame. You'll see it blurs and warps using an algorithm to make my face, God, it looks funny, to make my face uh, warp into a different place. So you can do that with transitions for anything, not just faces, but that's a really cool transition. On to the features. So we're done with plugins, features now. The first one is nesting and nesting timelines. 
And what that does is it basically takes whatever you've selected, puts it on its own Vegas project and saves it on its own Vegas project. And then once it's done that, you can drag and drop that project into your timeline as one single object. Another cool thing they added is project notes tab. So before they didn't have this, what you can do is you can add a new note and say, hey, delete the nest. And if you're working with multiple people or if you want to set yourself some reminders, you can put these in the notes and when you check them, if they've completed this task, they can select that and resolve it. Or if you want to just completely delete it, you can do that as well. But yeah, project notes, awesome. Another awesome feature you can do is Smart Split. Now what that does is instead of just selecting a clip and pressing S, you can select a range of a clip and then press Alt S and that what it does is it shrinks your clip and then transitions it and then adds that warp flow transition to make it a smooth transition. Another awesome thing they added is the screen capturing technology, kind of like a screen recorder, OBS or Camtasia or something like that. Very convenient way of doing a screen recording. They also added the ability to do automatic slideshows. So normally if you're like me and you've made a slideshow before, it's a pain in the butt when you have to put in 150 pictures and then shrink them all the right size and then merge them together and do the effects on them. You can actually search for pictures and then use their new automatic tools. Another thing they added in here, which is should have been done a long time ago, is hardware decoding for AVC and HEVC type videos. So they didn't have that before and it was relying specifically on your processor. But now if you have a graphics card that helps your computer out, it can use the graphics card power to utilize watching those videos. Another thing Vegas can do is read 8K videos. So you can drag an 8K video into your timeline and then you have to make it a proxy because that's a huge, very powerful file. But once you make a proxy for the 8K video, you can edit it and render it just fine. You can't render into 8K just yet. Maybe they'll add that feature in the future, but right now you can still only render up to 4K. Another awesome thing they did is they added experimental.mkv video reading support. So before in the past, if you tried dragging and dropping an MKV file in there, you couldn't, but now you can. It's experimental, but I haven't had any kind of issues with it so far. Reading, it is awesome. Another thing Vegas can now read is ProRes 4444 files that have alpha channels. So if you were to drag a very, very powerful video like that, it's high quality. Alpha channels make it even bigger. Usually those files are minimum two to five gigs for something small. If you were to drag that in there, Vegas normally wouldn't know what to do with it. But in Vegas 17, you can read those files just fine. And going to do the render settings, they have only added one new render setting that you could do. They've added the ability to render in 10-bit HDR NVIDIA encoding HEVC file formats. So I know that sounds like a lot of stuff, but basically most things are shot in 8-bit, which is a pretty good color range, but 10 bits, extreme amounts of color added into that. And then using NVIDIA encoder means it's going to be using your graphics card to encode instead of your processor, which usually makes it faster. And then if you render it into an HEVC wrapper, that keeps the quality, but actually makes the file size lower. It's rendering it in H.265 instead of what everything else normally is in, which is H.264. Some other cool little features they've added. Let's just say you want to delete a track over here to the left. It'll warn you that there's media on that track and you could say don't show it again if you don't like this or if you have accidentally deleted tracks like I have, this pop up can definitely save some time in projects without having to control Z or do anything like that. They've made the high DPI view of everything a default. So basically these little icons down here, normally they'd get really blurry if you zoomed into them. But if you go to options, preferences, display, then you see the use high DPI scaling is on by default. They say it's experimental, but I have not seen any issues with it so far. Another really useful thing they've added is the ability to view the event length on this bar right here. So you see where it says warp flow test footage and then it has my options I could do here. If we go to view and then go down to event length, it'll show you how long this clip is. Now that is extremely useful. They've also added a bunch of different layouts. So if you go to view windows layouts, you can do task specific ones. So adding and arrange media to add, add text and tiles, graphic elements. It'll add, it'll put little quick shortcuts over here to the left for beginners. 
And then lastly, they've added a bunch of HDR support. Since HDR monitors and cameras are getting a lot more thrown into the mix, they've added a bunch of support for that, which also some HLG support, which again was hybrid log gamma. Google the differences, but they're both basically HDR stuff. They have HDR specific color grading, HDR specific preview windows, GPU based processing to help with HDR footage since it is really intensive. And that's going to wrap it up for this video on the differences between Vegas 16 and Vegas 17. Now, if you need any kind of Vegas support, if you're learning it or want to know tutorials or any deals or things like that, go to the subreddit Vegas Pro, which is reddit.com forward slash r forward slash Vegas Pro. I'll link it in the description below, but that's a community full of people willing to help out and, you know, check out what you've done. And if you have any questions, we'll be more than happy to answer. But it's just a giant community that's growing for Vegas support for a bunch of users. And don't forget to check out my channel. I have a bunch of Vegas Pro 17 tutorials that I am pumping out weekly. And it's just a lot of fun over there at Scrapyard Films. I hear that guy's pretty cool. Uh, and if you wouldn't mind, maybe like and subscribe because that'll really help me out. I'm trying to hit a billion subscribers by the end of the year. And I think I, think I could do it with your help. So thanks again for watching, guys. And I will see you all in the next video.